Okay, we're gonna look at now the parallel circuits. Here my parallel circuit is basically simple. You see on this damn. Okay, now we're gonna talk about parallel circuits. A parallel circuit has more than one path for current to flow, as you can see on this slide. Okay, I have a battery, I have a switch, and I have two loads. But you can see here, I have more than one branch. This one, and this one. One thing you need to understand about a parallel circuit, unlike a series circuit, a parallel circuit, if this bulb blows out, this one still works. Think about the headlights on your car. And one headlight goes out, the other one will still work. That's why most cars are hooked up in parallel or series parallel. Most components are not hooked up in series. A series circuit, one light goes out, everything goes down. Here's some rules of parallel circuit. All, this, all the series circuit rules apply to each branch. Meaning, I'm gonna have voltage pushing on electrons through this conductor through this conductor, through this load, out the other side of the conductor, ground path, back to ground. So current's gonna leave the battery, voltage gonna push the electrons through the switch, through this load to ground, and also through this load to ground. Basically, each parallel circuit has a series circuit within, within it, I guess you can say. The circuits will have a common power source, our ground, but the resistance of each leg determines the current flow through that circuit without affecting the current flow through the other circuit. Meaning again, individual circuits. This is on individual circuit, this is on individual circuit. So if this was six ohms and this was three ohms, this would pull a certain amount of current or amps and this one would pull a certain amount of amps. This one will not affect this circuit. It all depends on the resistance in the circuit. The voltage drop is the same in each branch. Voltage drop at each branch equals source voltage. That's a rule in the parallel circuit. Here's your 12 volt battery. Each branch should drop 12 volts. Just as that, they should drop 12 volts. Now, my voltmeter is going, to up, is going to be hooked up in parallel with the circuit not interrupted. One leg here and one leg here. I should say when my voltmeter will be hooked up here, I'm going to have a lead hooked up here and a lead hooked up here across the circuit. I'm going to do a little voltage drop. And the same thing on this one. The voltage drop on this leg and this leg individually should be 12 volts. Each leg should always equal source voltage. If, it's if it doesn't, something is wrong. So in a parallel circuit, my voltage drop across each leg is source voltage. Remember, the only way you do a voltage drop, the circuit has to be complete. Switch closed, current flowing. It cannot be interrupted. It cannot be an opening in that circuit. Here's another rule. Current flow may vary in each branch. There's more than one path for current to flow that like I just showed you. Each branch will flow current in proportion to the load of that branch, meaning the resistance. The resistance, the resistance would vary. The, sorry, I should say the resistance will determine, will determine the current. Like I said earlier, this could be a one resistor, this could be another resistor of resistance. And that resistance will determine how much current flowing through that circuit. Now, use it like headlights at the same resistance, but that count later. The total current through a parallel circuit is equal to the sum of the current in each of the branches. The total current is also what you measure in the main line feeding the branches. We're gonna. I'm gonna show you this later on, but basically what it's saying here is this. Each leg will pull a certain amount of current. This one and this one. Let's say this pull four amps and this pull two amps. The total amount of current that leaves this main line is six. 
but each branch will use a certain amount of current or amps going through it, depending on the resistance. The total resistance is how is now effective. What's it? Total resistance is now effective resistance. The resistance value of the circuit drops as more branch resistance added. Let me read that again. The resistance value of the of the circuit drops as more branches are added. Basically, what I'm saying is this: If I have two loads in parallel, and I add a third one. My total resistance goes down, my amperage goes up. That's what it's saying. So every time I add a leg to the circuit, my resistance goes down and my current goes up. Again, here's the branches. One, two branches. My main line. So again, I said earlier, this is pouring four amps. And this is pouring two amps. The total current in this circuit is six. If I put an amp meter right here, either in series or inductive probe, I will read six amps here. But as it travels through, this will take out a certain many amps, a certain amount of amps, and this one will take up a certain amount of amps. It all depends on the resistance. Here's an example. Four amps gonna leave the battery. So my battery, the voltage gonna push current through the switch was four amps. This lady's gonna take up two, and this lady gonna take up two. So they have to be equal resistance to be the same amount of amperage. So each leg is taking a certain amount of resistance going through it. This one and this one. So again, if I put an amp meter here in series, to check this, I will read 4 amps. I put an inductive meter here, it will also be 4 amps. That's the main line leaving the battery. Now let's look at this one. Now I have a, it's doing a little voltage drop. You can see here, I try to explain earlier, look at this red lead hooked on one end, the black lead looking to, hooked up to the other end. That's a voltage drop across this light. And a voltage drop basically means how much voltage is being used to operate this load. Here, a C, B, and A. Up here, this is the amount of amps leaving this main fuse to feed this circuit. But like I said earlier, when this switch is closed, current is going to flow through this, out this fuse, down this circuit, through the switch, and it's going to divide among each resistor. So, if I do Ohm's law to figure this out, let me see if I can bring a voltmeter up in here. Hold on, let me see if I can get my voltmeter. There you go. Now let's do this one. It's a 12 volt source divided by 12 volts here. There's one amp leaving this circuit here. Now since they all equal resistance, it's going to be one amp through this one, one amp through this, and one amp through this. And they all meet up this splice, right? S200, S200 is a splice. Back to G100, it's some of a ground. So what's leaving this fuse is going to be three amps. Now once it crosses the switch and hit this splice, 100, it's going to divide one here, one here and one here. It's going to be one amp through each light. So my meter here will read three amps. My voltage drop, one amp times 12 ohms equals 12 volts. Remember we said earlier? Remember what we said earlier. Each leg should drop source voltage, which you see here. 
and on and on law proves that fact. We got one amp going through each leg. One amp times twelve ohms equal a twelve volt drop. Here, here, and here. So this meter this meter would read twelve volts. This meter would read twelve volts. If I had a meter here that would read twelve volts. If I had an amp meter in series, so it's break is broken up here. It's in series. So current's gonna flow through here, through the meter, out, and go through the circuit. That would read the amp is running through that circuit, which here is the main line, three amps. So three amps come here, split among, that's a splice, go across the split, or splice, splice one, S100. I'll have one amp going through this leg, one amp going through this leg, and one amp going through this leg. And meet here, going back to ground, here will be three amps again. Now let's look at this one. A little different. Now I'm really going to need this voltmeter. 12 volts again. Now I have 10 ohms, 20 ohms, and 30 ohms. Oops, I want my voltmeter to go. Lost the voltmeter. So let's see how many amps going through here and let's see if that rule applies with the 12 volt drop. Remember, you gotta you gotta remember Ohm's law. So it's 12 volts divided by, let's say, 30 ohms equals 400 milliamps. I'll show you how to move the decimal later on. That's four tenths of an amp, which is 400 milliamps. So I got 400 milliamps running through this. 30 ohm resistor bulb back to ground. Now if I times 400 milliamps by 30, let's see what we get here. 12 volts. Ohm's law just proves the fact. Fact. Each leg needs to use up, has to use up 12 volts. That's the rule. If it doesn't, that means I got resistance somewhere up here or down here. In the parallel circuit, the rule is they have to use up 12 volts. I should, let me take that back. I shouldn't say 12 volts. I should say source voltage. I should be saying source voltage. Because that could be any number. That glass is down here. Let's try this again. Let's try this leg here. Let me try this leg. So we got 12 volts. Divided by 20 equals 600 milliamps times tw times 20 ohms. I should have a 12 volt drop. Oops, I did something wrong. <laughs> Let's try that again. So I see the amperage. 12 volts. Divided by 20 equals 600 milliamps. 600 milliamps times 20 ohms, I should see a 12 volt drop. See, 12 volts. Let's go to the next one, which is number A. 12 volts divided by 10 ohms. 1.2 amps times amperes times resistance gives you voltage 12 volt drop so you can see again I want you to remember the current in a parallel circuit is based off the resistance in that circuit a voltage drop should be equal across each leg that should be source voltage. I should say yes. Yeah, source voltage should be equal across each leg. Uh, an amp meter is hooked up in series, as you can see here. Get this out of here. With a break in the circuit, so an amp meter is hooked up in series with a break in the circuit, and this particular amp meter, 
but a voltmeter hooked up in parallel on each side of that load to do a voltage drop. There is no breaks in a circle when you do a voltage drop. The only time you break the circle open is with an amp meter you see here. I'm doing a voltage drop is it going across the load. One lead on this side, one lead on the other side, no brakes so current can flow. I can have a voltage drop here. I see it on my meter. I know that if that's confusing to you, hit me up in class, email me, social media, I explain a little better to you. I, maybe I can clear up your question. Peace. I'm out.